Hi and welcome back to Monkey Room. I'm back on the White Lady Draft tonight. Try and get it rolling and a uh, bit more pieces on it. So all I've done so far is get the front wheel in just to give it a bit more stability on the ram. So it's pretty straightforward as I say, but um, when I put whenever I put new tyres on the rims, I always tend to use like a uh, like an oil-based lubricant type of thing around the rim, only because when I come to take it off, if I get a puncture or I need a new tyre, they're a lot easier to get off then instead of fighting with the with the rim with a crowbar or whichever way you know you get them off. So let's say that I've got the front wheel in. So tonight we've got to put a few parts on. So if I start at the front, I'll put the bars back on. I've already gone ahead and put the switches on. Again, pretty straightforward. All you got to do is just feed it through the bars. What I tend to do is tape up the ends of the of the wires, and then literally feed it through and then hook them through. But I've got new rubbers on the uh, where the wiring goes through, and that's pretty much it. Straightforward. I, I say I've got new grips to go on, which we can do tonight. So, but before I put them on, I just want to put a dab of grease on the threads in there again it's just to prevent they do tend to seize up over time uh, we don't want that so again it's got new knobs on it so everything's nice and new and then tighten them up nice and tight straight forward and then where, where have i put the other one? Oh, there you go again same with the throttle i've all done that already it's a bit challenging, but it's, you might have seen it on some of my other videos. It's just a case of getting the worm right. So it's, um, again, pretty straightforward. Just add all new um, all new bits in there. I've also put the horn on, the horn wiring button and stuff. So get that on. The original bars, I say, I can't, at the moment, we can't find brand new ones. So it's, um, I've polished these off as much as I can. Tight that, but it's going in. Um, at the moment, shires are out of stock of new bars. So I'll just tighten that. There you go, so it's nice and tight. It's starting to look like a pipe again there. Okay, so that's, uh, there's your throttle cable. Slide through there. And then the horn will go into the headlight bucket, like so. so when I come to put the um, headlight on, I'll do all the wiring. So to do boot. And with the wire it's all colour coded so it's all pretty straightforward right okay what we'll do let's just see okay so again we've got new grips over to the side so we'll just go for the first one I've come to before we go okay we've got the left hand side and then Prop is obviously bigger in there. So what I tend to do, everyone's got their own way of doing these things. What I tend to do is get a boiling hot water. Okay, like a jug like that. And then literally just throw the pair of them in. And then get get let them get nice and soft. Um, shut them down. Well, well, the grips are getting right. Obviously, just hook them out. So we'll have this one, and in theory, then it should just literally. So 
so while they're getting warm that that and that and that so you've done the front wheel uh, we can put the, the tanks in as we've seen on the last video so what I can do now is put the battery box in I'll tell you what I will do I'll put the rectifier on first and then uh, it's a lot easier to do so if uh, Okay, simple as that. So, get out today on the bikes and the STs, and uh, do you know what? Wherever we go, we went to a couple of local motorbike caps that we've never been to before, and um, there was all ranges of bikes there, from Harleys, Triumphs, sports bikes, and no matter what, they all came over and had a chat with us. And uh, it's true what they say, you meet the nicest people on a Honda. And then, um, why is it spinning? That's sad. Um, yeah, and then, you know, they, they all remembered them. My generation older, they remember them when they were new. And uh, they were quite, um, I'm not going to use the word shock, but they were quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, surprised at the way, you know the distance that we've done on them and obviously because we're carrying fuel it was uh, it, <laughs> we didn't realize why you know but uh, that carrier of mine and Ian's has been a godsend to be honest with you because before that I'd only say my my bike is limited to 30 miles on a full tank because obviously I've put that soup up a little bit and um, it's just peace of mind knowing you know we can go on these places now and just keep going whereas before you know it was always on the back of my mind that when's it gonna run out and, and this that and the other so when, when i'm carrying the fuel it, that's gone now and i can I enjoy the ride and the places we go to you know you want to have a look at the scenery and this that and the other so okay let's try these again then There you go, ask why you should run in the first place. Right, what I try and do is get all the lines, I know it sounds silly, get all the lines nice and straight. Because sometimes what you tend to do, because you're squeezing it on, you get all the lines. This one's a bit of a fat, this one. I might have gone off by that. I'll leave it in there for a bit longer, wherever I put it. Right, okay, while well, that's getting warm, say so that one's on, we can put the cable bracket for the muck guard. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Alchemy and uh, the lads there. To, I wasn't happy with the mud guard. It, it had dents in it and this, that and the other. So what we've done is uh, we've got another mud guard. And um, it's a lot better, this one. So we had that one rushed through. So again, thanks to, uh, to Alchemy for rushing it through for me. And uh, I'm a lot happier with that now. You know, when you build these bikes, and if people out there watching build these bikes, if something you're not happy with, it just irritates you. And, you know, until it's done right, it just eats you away. And uh, I know this it did with me, but over here in the UK, these mudguards are hard to find. But, uh, yeah, so I say it's got, got a better one on it now. Got a couple of little dints in it, but it's a lot better than what the other one was. And now, uh, right, should we try that grip again? De -de 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 -de. Let's get rid of the rubbish. I'm going to come back to that in a sec.
Right, where's the, um, let's see if we can get this one on there. Be quick. Oops, don't help if you. See what I mean about the twisty. So they're all uh, straight because obviously when it goes cold, it'll go rock hard. That's better. Just make sure. Yeah, they're nice and straight. Brilliant. Right, that's the grips on. I say I bet there's people out there saying it's easier way, but until I find them, that's the way I do it. Right, okay, where are we? Let's uh, just move you about a bit, hold on tight, and then just move you down a bit. How's that? Right, so let's put the swinging arm on. Again, grease, should be a bolt in somewhere. I'm using Normal conventional grease. That goes in there. Oh, there you go. Sometimes, when you're going powder coating, it, it adds that extra layer. And um, there's been a couple in the past where they've had to kind of like file them away. There you go. What's going on? Tighten that up in a sec. Alright, okay. Right, let's put the shocks on. I've already put the bracket on, the stabiliser bar if you like. That's already on. But again, I had to file away because that's my fault really. I didn't um, tape it up for the lads from the powder coating. So I'll just quickly do this side then because the camera's there and then I'll uh, show you how I do this one. Again, a dab of grease. In there. Okay. Big washer goes behind. And then Dome nuts. These are quite nice. These dome nuts. The original ones. They're not battered, as uh, some of them are. Where people are written with armour. But um, yeah, quite nice then. Oops. Let's get a start on that. Okay. I'll show you on this side because the camera's this side. So I'll take all these off in a minute. Okay, grease in there, go on there. So, what you've got big washer that goes over, then you put shock on, and then normal dome nut on the bottom. Now, because it's got the upspecked exhaust, you've got to have this like spacer bar. So that goes on there like that. And then you have your dome nut on that when I come to put the exhaust on. So that's on there. Yeah, normally there are 14. Uh, 
Yeah, so I was saying I was out on the bikes this morning with Ian and uh, on the STs and uh, we went to a local motorbike shop that we haven't been to and nice calf, Sam's calf, very nice, 17, but um, it's nice to get out on them. A bit windy this morning and of course if you ride these bikes yourself you know when, when you've got a headwind on them they're uh, all over the place, but um, right, that, 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 and that, and then we can put what's that we're putting the cover on yet? There's a cover that goes on there. Uh, I'll leave the rear pegs for now till next time. So, right, okay, we'll put the rear wheel in, but what I want to do because I've already done the front, but I thought I'd show you on the back is how I put the brake pads in let me just move you though so you can see hold on tight this might get a bit bumpy and then I'll just bring you down where's that Right, okay. So again, this is what this is how I do it. I'm not saying it's the right way, but it's the way I do it. So brand new on the shoes, the hands are clean. And then you've got your shaft. Give him a dab of grease because they, they do tend to seize up over time, and then your brakes stick on. Okay, that's nice in there, and then I get that lined up. And obviously, shoes only go on one way. You've got a sickle and a flat bit. Now I tend to do it is fold them in half, like so. Okay, like so. And then literally, by the power of great score, there you go. Simple as that. They're on. And I've got a rough idea where it's going to be. Okay. We've had them zinc plated, it's had a little bit of thickness on them. So where's my knocking stick going on? Right, okay. Be noise now, sorry. Why is that not going on, folks? Let me try and uh, widen that. So, what you tend to do just open it up a little bit. And when you tighten it down, roughly it out there, isn't it? Again, watch the noise. Oh, looks a bit. Uh, where's that not going on? We've got to line the paws up. Yeah, definitely the one. So line the paws up. Like so. Yeah, it's not playing paw. Don't know why, unless it's it should just go straight on. Maybe I just wanted to open up a little bit more. Still not right now. 
Okay, that should just slide on. Yeah, it's still not bad enough. It is now. Right, okay. And literally all you do then, slide the 10 mil through. I'm guessing what's happened. It's got um, somehow it's got not crushed but closed a bit. There you go, it's on now. Good old hammer. And then tighten them up. Right, where's the wheel? So I'll tell you what, let's put your back, hold on tight. And we'll lift you back up. How was that? Right. Again, saying again, I've put already put the uh, Sprocket on. Already cleaned the hub for the new shoes. So all we're going to be doing now, you have a spacer that will go like that, and then again I've had these plated alchemy, and uh, give it a bit of grease. We'll put the chain adjusters on or a spacer. Hmm. Let's do it another way. Again, because I've had it. It's a bit tighter than what it was when it came off. What I tend to do is leave the tensioners right off until we uh, put the chain on. So on that note, I'll just leave the nut slack like so. I always tend to put the nut facing the sprocket. So that's tighten right up. Okay, how's that? And there you go, boom, it's rolling again. And if we just locate that, it should be a. Uh, Put your bar, put your, your bar, put your nut through there. There you go, that wheel ain't gonna go anywhere now. And then you put your bigger washer and a smaller washer. Should be, uh, da, 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 should be not somewhere. Uh, if not, I can get one. It should be here somewhere. But I think for tonight, that's pretty much where we're up to. So again, uh, I had the mud guard redone. 
it's another complete mud guard a lot better than the other one and uh, all the wheels are back together handlebars are on grips are on so it's got new knobs which sets it up a lot better all new switches on there as well and they'll say that they're all lined up they're not all twisted there you go um so you just got to give that a polish give that a clean i didn't want to get it plated mainly because the top taps alley and i've had one done before and uh, it didn't come out too well because obviously it's alley but uh they're all to get hold of over here battery trays in rectifiers on just got to charge the battery up uh, there's a bat light coming quite a decent one I did want to put the rusty one on and um, so the back wheels on now that's all right just want a bit of, bit of tidied up got the brake arm on I've got to do the brake pedal we'll do that next time and hopefully next time the engine will be going in and uh, we'll be far off then to be honest with you uh, it's the only trouble being a white or any you got build fingerprints all over it especially white it shows everything so I've got rear foot pegs to go on um, what else is there to go I've got to do the headlight but again I'm going to try and find a decent one the one for it isn't the best I'll show you what I mean uh, it's in here somewhere these are all to go on so as I say it's not Got a bit of pit in, but it's a, it's a genuine one with the side light on. But I say it's a shame to put that on a nice bike now. Got the seat bracket to go on. It's not worth till I get the seat. Uh, rubber mat for the top. New chain. Charge the battery up. And then there's your side cover. Rear foot pegs. Uh, of course the stand as well. So that's pretty much it for today, I think, folks. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty made up with it so far. It's, at least it's rolling again now. And then, um, so hopefully next time the engine will go in. And who knows, we'll try and get it running, eh? Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da, toodaloo.